Hey, you on YouTube, Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. And yes, it is Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Stout Time. A beer I've been looking forward to put, putting, reviewing and putting on my channel for quite a while. And that is Nickel Brooks Kentucky Bastard 2015 version. I love this beer. Well, I haven't had this year's version, so take that with a grain of salt. But I had this, um, my buddy Joe... NAPA Beer Reviews, check his shit out, awesome dude. Brought some of this back from Canada because he was going to brewing school in Canada and brought some back last year. And it literally, I think it might have been one of the more, more titty-blowing experiences of my life. It was just fucking that fucking good. Uh, but we reviewed it on his channel, um, I believe. If not, then I just never posted it, which is really fucking weird. It might have been some, one of the beers that we actually lost in review, regardless been really looking forward to uh, giving us a review, and I'm really excited to give this one a review because it's this year's version, so it's nice to see some new stuff. So uh, I've had it quite a few times, um, and I put up a few other reviews uh, from this brewery on my channel. There, uh, Naughty Neighbor, I believe, is on my channel. Um, I believe um, their Headstock is on my channel. Their uh, Nickelbrook, their Winey Bastard, which is a wine barrel aged version of this. Um, I believe you even have their Cuvée, which isn't this, but another one of Nickelbrook's beers. So, yeah. Super excited. Let's dive in and see what she's got. First thing first. I have this weird little kind of placardy thing up top here. I've never seen this before, so I'm going to go over this first. It says on the front here, how to properly open a wax seal bottle. Okay, I'm not sure if they've had issues with people opening their wax seal bottles or what, but this is kind of weird. Uh, it says here, uh, soften wax seal by running it. Running wax end under warm water. Um, step two, with a knife, cut a line into the wax around the bottom of the cap. Um, using a bottle opener, hook the front lip down, um, in, and cut and press and to remove the bottle cap. Regardless, they're just basically saying warm it up, cut a line around, and then uh, pop it off. Proper serving to a glass, which I have here, which I didn't see in the back, so meh. I picked the right glass. But that is just very bizarre in general. I just, I don't know about that. Because the whole warming, running over underwater thing just kind of doesn't do it for me. Anyway, as far as what it says on a bottle. Um, small Batch Imperial Stout, 2015 Kentucky Bastard. Aged Kentucky Bourbon Barrels. Like I said, I did their Nickelbrook, um, the uh, Bolshevik Bastard. Uh, that's their Russian Imperial Stout. That's what's inside here. Um, let's see. On the side it has, we kicked up a, uh, kicked it up a notch with our Bolshevik Bastard Imperial Stout. Aging in Kentucky Bourbon Barrels. Uh, the rich chocolate coffee and dark fruit flavors from Imperial Stout are married together with this uh, with a vanilla oak and warming alcohol from Bourbon Barrels. Together as one, the result is an incredible blend of aroma and taste. Drink it today or sell it to enjoy later as it matures. Cheers. 12% um, alcohol by volume. Um, let's see. They break down everything on their bottles. So they have here on the side, they have their malts. Um, and then, like I said, they break down everything. They use pale chocolate, dark chocolate, roasted barley, carafa, carafa, uh, special three chocolate wheat, crystal, flaked barley, flaked wheat, flaked oats. So you have a lot of flaked going down there, so you expect a nice body. Hops, German, Magnum Nugget, Centennial, Yeast, Dry English, Barrel, Heaven Hill. Um, so there you go. Um, so first off, label-wise, fucking awesome. I mean, the name alone, Kentucky Bastard, is fantastic. Bolshevik Bastard is a great name. Kentucky Bastard is even a better name. I dig it. The label design is awesome. You know, it's like, I don't know, a mixture of old JD labels combined with, like, a kind of wanted poster from the West. I don't know what's going on. Other than the fact that I think the, the wax to their fancy little sprigs here, too... The labeling, everything about it, I have to dig, and I am not going to run this under some hot water. I am going to take a wax cutter. Who would have thunk it? From a wine bottle, or a wine key, that was sent to me by Bira the 32, Vita Bira the 32, out of Italy, and try to grind through this sucker, because that whole... <sighs> that whole, uh... Warming under water thing is just really weird. I don't know if they got maybe because it seems like a little bit harder wax. Maybe they're like, oh man, this wax hardened up a lot, so they're having a hard time with people. But what I typically do is this usually does the job by itself. If it doesn't, you get a nice wine key with a nice wax and an opener. 
you do this thing on the side, then you move on the sides, and you're usually pretty good to go. After that, once you get it started, and you just rip that sucker off there. I know this is one of Chad from Albino Rhino's favorite pastimes. Being that he is legally blind, I can understand why he heats it so much. And then find a good way to go on this sucks. Boom, done. Took a little bit longer than you'd like, but such is life. Okay. Let's see what she's got. Oh yeah, baby. That's cash money right there, I can tell you already. Color-wise, got a really rich, deep, dark. Oh my god, it looks like fucking. It looks like look at that. Defying gravity over there. And it's got like two layers. You can see how I poured it and started to let it go a little bit um slower. It looks exactly what I want my coffee to look like. Just this rich, nice milk chocolatey look to it. Defying gravity, super creaminess, and, and it's bizarre because there's this line where you can see I was pouring it at a certain speed and then I kind of slowed down and kind of reduced the head on it. You can see exactly where that happened. So I mean it's a pretty uh pretty dense beer. <laughs> the base bottom of it you can glean the ever so slightest bit of color, but I mean that's pretty damn dark. So I mean that's that's a dark beer. And it's just a line of alcohol legs that has not moved. So it's got a nose on it. Slightly congested on this side. Not from sickness, from some weird allergic, allergic reaction to cooking. But uh, I think I'm going to be able to get a nose on it. Let's see. Yeah. We're going to smell this for a while. I'm not going to talk, so enjoy yourself. Okay. You definitely, and this is one of my favorite parts of this beer, is you definitely get the stout in there. You get a nice roastiness to it, um, but that kind of like bittering or harsh roastiness is absolutely gone. Not, not that um, Bolshevik Bastard has a ton of like really over the top like bittering roastiness, but it's a bit harsher than this. Not that it's harsh, it's a bit harsher. It's a difference. You're definitely getting the bourbon in there you're getting a nice um chocolatey dark baker's chocolatey kind of char not like a super chocolatey char but you're getting a little subtle kind of baker's chocolatey char with a decent heaping of vanilla a little bit of coconut going on there and a nice sweet bourbon when i talk about sweet bourbon for me it's typically just more cherries but it's like a caramelized cooked with cherry But the vanilla is really nice. It's almost like like a vanilla ice cream as opposed to just like vanilla extracty. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely getting a kind of cordially vibe out of here. Chocolate coffee, cherry cordial. If you kind of made it like a more of like a maybe a white chocolate as opposed to a dark baker's chocolate. Like even though I said it was like a dark kind of barrel char on it, you get that kind of out of char, but the the um, the chocolate covered cherry aspect that I typically get in a lot of bourbon barrel aged beers and a lot of people get. This is like a lighter, whiter chocolate. It's not as deep and rich. Um, yeah, it's just really good. And like I said, you still get the, um, the the beer itself, the stout itself. A lot of imperial stouts or any kind of barrel aged stouts nowadays, a lot of people like over barrel, I guess you would say, to the point where you actually lose the beer in it or take too small of a beer and put it in. Oh my God, now I'm getting like like almost like a um, like a coffee maple syrup I got out of that. I don't even know where the fuck that came from. Yeah, I'm not getting this rich kind of maple syrupy vibe out of it. Oh wow, that's really fucking cool. Either I'm stroking out or that's there. Wow. Yeah, it's this rich maple syrup I'm getting now. Totally wasn't there before. Wow, that is super fucking cool. I didn't get that when I first smelled it, and I didn't get it from any of the other uh, ones I had from last year or even older. It's like, um, I'm sure it's part of the uh, combination of the bourbon and the barrel char kind of blending together, but it's just this like kind of sugary caramel mixed with like maple syrup kind of thing going on there. Just, 
Yeah, it smells ridiculous fucking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it looks awesome, smells awesome. I'm going to drink it because I want to taste it. So here you go. Cheers. It's delicious. Wow. Man. This is the beer that did it for me. When it comes to Canada. You know, people, if you watch my reviews, I've talked about like doing um, beer dweebs on Wednesday, which is very Canadian-centric. My buddy going to Canada, so I have access, or I have, I have um, whatever you want to call it, like inroads to Canadian beers. So. And I had some, and I was like, oh, these are all really nice. And then once I had this, I was like, okay, okay, there's something going on up there. And that was that freaking good. And it was good across the whole board. It wasn't a thing where I had it once and it was like awesome and then I had it again and I was like, this is really good. And then I had it again and I was like, yeah, I really like this beer. Every time I was like, man, this is so fucking good. I don't remember it being this good. That's the weird thing is that, or a great thing, I used to say instead of weird, I think this is even better than last year's. And I had last year's a couple months ago, which means it was H, which I usually love, but... Hmm... First thing I get, barrel char, up front. That's the first thing I get. It's soft. It's not overly burnt. Soft, rich, bit of kind of that dark chakra I was kind of talking about going on in there. Midway through is all that cherry. That cordial cherry with a little bit brighter kind of chocolate going on. I'm not getting that super dose of maple syrup that I thought I was going to get based off of that nose when I kept huffing it. And I'm still getting it on the nose. But yeah, I, it is there, but it's more kind of early on in the finish. That roasted malt is definitely still in the beer there. It's a bit bigger than I thought it would be based off of the nose, but that's pretty damn fine. Because I want... I, there's... It's not this beer isn't perfectly rounded yet. There's still some corners to it. It's definitely, absolutely 100% drinkable right now. But I can see it just kind of getting a bit softer and a bit rounder over time. And it's just going to evolve into something crazier, which is even fucking more ridiculous than it will actually uh, talk about. Yeah. This is up there with one of the best Imperial Barrel Age Imperial Stouts that I've had. And uh, might be the best Barrel Age Russian Imperial Stout i had. So let's cover that. Let's actually go over that. Let's talk about it for a bit. Is it one of the better beers I've had as of late? Yes. Is it one of the better Russian Imperial Stouts I've had as of late? Yes. Barrel Age, yes. Beers in general, yes. Um, it's just that good. Like I said, that combination... A balance. The beer is still sturdy. It's there. It's not overpowered by the barrel. That's awesome to see. You see a lot, like I said previously, a lot of breweries either have too small of beer in the barrel or have too much barrel into the beer. And there's just the balance issue there. I've heard some stories about this beer. It's gotten better with time. I'm sure it's just an experience thing. But like I said, I had last year's and my ball tightening good you know what I mean this one fucking ball tightening craziness my assholes popped during my titties are flying off the whole nine um yeah and it, it, it's just that that maple syrup on the nose is bonkers if I'm the only one who ever gets it then I feel bad for you because it's really fucking cool even though there's no maple syrup in it I'm getting it yeah, it's fantastic um would I buy it again? Fuck yeah, if I can get it. Here's where we kind of have a little bit of weirdness going on. <sighs> Canadian only, up until about a month ago. Nickel Brook is coming to the United States. Um, I do know that these and some of their other bottles are available in Ohio as I am reviewing this, which means 
by the time I post it, it might be other places I do not know, which is really fucking awesome. I'm not sure what the price point is. I'm pretty sure the reason why I know this, Ethan from Ethan Beer Reviews. Ethan Beer Reviews. Um, check him out if you never check him out. Uh, awesome dude. He's just fucking Ethan. He's fucking awesome. Um, he's the one who, pretty much the um, importer of all these Ontario craft breweries, um, is based out of Ohio. So he kind of gets first dibs on a lot of these beers. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not, if I'm not misremembering, he said this is what they've kind of seen come into his area already. So he said it was there. Um, so if he says it's there, it's there, which means it's going to probably creep into the northern United States eventually. If they follow suit, um, they're going to follow the same pattern they did with other beers. For example, I'll use Flying Monkeys. I reviewed their Chocolate Manifesto. I love it. Chocolate Manifesto, only available in Canada, then available in the United States. It was available in... Can't, it was available in Ohio, I believe Michigan, and I believe New York State for several months, almost uh, almost a full year. Um, probably about 10 months later, it landed in a PA. So if I'm going to be seeing this in 10 months, <sighs> I'm kind of fucking excited. Um, price point wise, uh, 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 15 I think Ethan said it was around, maybe I could be wrong, you know, I'd have to ask him or maybe he would be kind enough to comment here. Um, if he watches this video, um, I know this is like 12 bucks or 13 bucks in Canada, Canadian in Canada, which means it's like $10 American, which is filthy fucking ridiculous. So go to fucking Canada and get some. It's worth the fucking trip at that price point. Um, and just say if you like what, if you like this, if you like good beer, if you like, um, if you like barrel aged and Russian Imperial Stouts. This is definitely, I don't want to say it's definitely Russian Imperial Stout. No, oh, it is. The way of flavoring is there. And I, I skip a lot of shit when I'm talking about reviews because I assume people know, which I shouldn't. You get in that in like nice, subtle, that may be where actually the differentiations in chocolate are coming from. Typically Russian Imperial Stouts are getting a bit of coffee, a bit of chocolate. So I'm getting dark chocolate and then like kind of like a brighter chocolate. Maybe it's a barrel versus thing. Or you're getting a Russian Imperial Stout, Asian bourbon barrels that's made really fucking well. So if you like Russian Imperial Stouts and you want to taste what they would be like barrel aged really well, you want to check this out. If you like bourbon barrel aged stuff, you want to check this out. If you like good beer, like I said, you want to check this out. And... If you give a shit and you want to check it out, because I just fucking dig it. It's that good of a fucking beer. So there we go. Um, another review in the books. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review as much as I did. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun, fun stuff. Uh, if you want to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. And uh, yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a beautifully, beautifully barreled Russian Imperial Stout right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.